Our guest today is the Ontario-based musician and writer Birthvi Yoga Ratnam. Beginning his career releasing music for the last five years, he is now expanding his talents into writing literature. He has released 15 short stories to date. These short stories have topped Amazon's Kindle book charts worldwide. Currently, he is working on his first novel entitled The Touch of Time. Welcome to the show. For the past five years, you've focused primarily on your music career. Can you tell us more about what these past five years in music have meant to you? Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> I've been uh, singing since I was a kid, pretty much, and like my mom threw me into like music class, and I, it was kind of like a chore in the beginning. But as I grew up, like I kind of liked it a little more. Uh, I, I run, enrolled myself in a music school. Uh, for the Centennial College. It was a program called Music Industry Arts and Performance. So I graduated from that in 2018 and I was like recording and releasing uh, singles on Spotify, Apple Music and like all the streaming websites uh, since like 2015. So yeah, the last five years have been uh, pretty fun, but I kind of felt like I was a little burnt out uh, during the first pandemic, uh, or sorry, the first lockdown. We're still in the pandemic, but uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I just needed like a little break from it because like, I felt like I tried like everything I could and I was kind of like losing my um, uh, musical drive, if you can say. So that's why I kind of like went into writing in a sense because like it, I was still like artistically inclined in my mind. So like I needed a new avenue to explore my like uh, artistic um, valleys that I have in in myself and yeah like music has been great i still want to do music i have a couple songs uh, coming out this year but uh yeah like right now i just want to not focus focus on it anymore because like i feel like um i, I kind of like burnt out and i just need like a little break from it which was kind of nice because like now that i'm kind of getting back into music uh, slowly like it's giving me a little bit more um, energy and uh, inspiration that's good that you can kind of balance between the two. I feel like that's healthier anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say was your biggest challenge and your biggest accomplishment as a musician? Uh, as a musician, uh, I actually uh, do music in like two different languages. So obviously English and uh, also a language ca called Tamil. So uh, I've been doing like a lot of shows, uh, like live shows and stuff like that. But like my original content actually caught the eye of like a bunch of people back in India. So uh, a lot of people in the, the Tamil film industry, because uh, the thing is like, for people that are not um, familiar with like Indian films, uh, a lot of them have like music in them. So like the Tamil film industry, like majority, I would say like 95% of the films have at least like five or six songs in them. So like there's a guy that does music for them. He's called the music director. So the music director would like usually want to find new uh, artists to work with and new musicians or singers that he wants to uh, or he or she wants to work with so like I actually sent some of my original songs and I got some attention from them the only issue was like um, they kept asking like when are you to come and visit and the thing is like you know COVID hit it's so, a like, pandemic <laughs> Yeah, so like the uh, last two years, like I, I was actually thinking of like maybe traveling there in 2020 and then March, uh, all those plans went out the window. But yeah, uh, I mean, hopefully if, you know, Amr Khan is the last of the wave, hopefully this summer I, I might like try and travel and like see uh, if I can get opportunities. But yeah, like uh, not only that, like um, there's a famous musician named Air Rahman. He did a show in Toronto and like they were picking people to meet him at his show so it was like a cover contest so i did a bunch of covers and i was one of the five people that got to meet him and it was super cool because like he was like my um my role model and my musical inspiration since i was a kid so meeting him uh, for the first time in like person was like so amazing and you know he was such a great person like usually people say like don't meet your idols but honestly like it was such an opposite reaction with him like he was so kind and he just like smiled and like um yeah it was like it, it really made me appreciate his art more because like i always hear like stories of people meeting their like idols and their uh inspirations and they're like oh wow like they're not even that nice but he was like the such a great person and maybe like want to do music more and more and then obviously 
you know, the last two years have been kind of tough. But uh, yeah, like um, outside of that, I would say like I'm still trying to aim to make a uh, make a name in the industry in uh, Canada and like North America. But I'd say in India, Malaysia, and Singapore, like in Sri Lanka, I I kind of made a like a, a little bit of a niche crowd there. So I'm like I'm kind of happy about that. Well, speaking of your transition between uh, music into writing, what made uh, writing so appetizing for you? Was it uh, like what made it to be the next creative outlet that you'd pursue? Well, uh, I've, I've been reading since I was a kid. Like I, I used to read a lot. Like my mom would usually uh, take me to the library that was close by to our apartment, and I would like read at least like two to three books a week. So like I'll burn through like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, even during uh, COVID, like uh, one uh, March 2020, like when it happened, like I, I was kind of just bored of looking at my phone all the time or like going on the computer, or, like watching movies. So like, I thought like, okay, why don't I, why don't I just like start reading again? Because I used to love it when I was a kid, and then uh, slowly, like every single week, I would just order a book off of Chapters or like Amazon, and uh, I have like um, a library upstairs in my house, and like. Uh, there, there was like a big bookshelf that was kind of just like one shelf that was only full and the rest were like empty. So I was like, okay, let me just read and read and see if I can fill up the shelf. And it's like almost like fully, fully full. So like I've read at least a hundred books since uh, 2020. Wow. So that, yeah. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Wow. I mean like that's... It, it's kind of nice to not look at your phone sometimes right because it's yeah. always like negative news and stuff so like yeah. diving yourself into books reading and that kind of like recharged my love about writing too because like I know it's kind of weird to say but I loved writing essays and uh reports when I was like younger so like kind of revisiting that but like writing in like fiction was uh, a nice like thing and like I, I have a kind of a very cinematic mind I love like movies and I write movie reviews as well because I used to be a movie reviewer too which is kind of like a, a little thing that happened in my life so I always thought like oh uh, even if I'm not gonna make my own movie like why can't I just try and uh, write my own stories that I would love to see as a movie so like that kind of just became uh, motivation for me and then I've written at least uh, 20 short novels and I'm currently writing a full full length novel that I'm hoping I would finish by um, at least spring this year. Oh, I was aiming to release it in Christmas, but then, you know, I, I kept getting new ideas for other stories. So I just kept releasing whatever I had. And then, yeah, I'm just fully focused on the full length novel right now. No, well, that's a lot of short novels. What has been your reception that you've got from other people towards uh, those short novels? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for asking that, actually. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people uh, outside of Canada, which kind of sucks because, like, um, I, I thought, like, you know, people in Canada will read, but I guess they don't, uh, not as much, but... Um, Too yeah, much TikTok. <laughs> yeah, God, I, I just really hope, that, I really hope not. I, I really hope people get the love of reading. They're, like, reading so awesome. But, yeah, uh, in America, UK, Brazil... Uh, India, Australia, and uh, Japan, like people are reading my books. Like in America, some of my books went number one in the short story like charts. Um, Cause I released my books on this thing called Kindle. Uh, it's, it's called KDP. So it's like the Kindle direct publishing platform that Amazon has. And uh, in the beginning, I just like released it because like I saw on this Instagram post saying like, oh, if you want a side hobby, you can release books on Amazon. So I'm like, okay, I have a bunch of stories that I've written, like might as well try to like release and see where it goes. And the first book, like it charted at like number 25. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. And then uh, a couple of my books after that, they were like going to like number 10 and then slowly to number five. And then uh, I think during the summer of 2021, I had like uh, three books at one, two and three. So I was like, okay, this is, this is kind of cool. But um, yeah, like, um, yeah, the reception outside of Canada has been great. I really hope in Canada it starts getting a little better. But um, yeah, some of my books have charted here. But I guess uh, not a lot of people use the uh, Kindle uh, app or the Kindle book here. 
Whereas in America, I think it's more popular. So it kind of makes sense as to why it, I have a little more success there. But yeah, hopefully 2022 will be a more positive year for Canadian publishing for me. <laughs> Well, you're working on your first full-length novel right now, The Touch of Time. What can you tell us about this upcoming project? So it's actually, it's kind of weird. I had a, I would say a nightmare or dream uh, one time. Uh, so like in the dream, there was this person that, um, it's kind of a spoiler, but not really a spoiler. Um, Is this they, what inspires you? Is Are your dreams? The thing that, uh, yeah, dreams or even like, if I watch a movie and like the way that a certain scene or the ending goes, I'm like, oh, I could have, I would have wanted it to be this way. So I think like, okay, how can I make a story based off of that? So um, yeah, I had a dream and there was like this person that every time they touch something, like uh, things go back in time or forward in time. So uh, using that, um, the idea of the book is pretty much like, it's like two stories in one. So uh, one story is a scientist that creates the ultimate warrior uh, out of like a random person that they found on the street and they train them all the martial arts and all the fighting techniques that are known to man. And uh, the secret weapon is that he always wanted to make a time machine in, his, uh, in like human form. So what he did is he made both of the person's hands into like time machines. So like if he were to hold on to an apple, he can reverse time to make it get back into the seed form or uh, forward it in time so it'll be rotten. So the person gets out of his confinement because he's like confined in this like, um, uh, I would say like a layer. Does it work and, on wrinkles? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean like, yeah. I mean like in, in according to the story, like he can reverse or uh, go in uh, forward in time uh, to do stuff. and. Um, the other half of the story is like a police officer that's like investigating these crimes that are very peculiar and then they meet uh, both characters meet in the middle and like I'm still writing the ending so I'm trying to find a way to end the story but yeah that's the gist of it that's sometimes the hardest part how, how you know it's going so well how do you have the perfect ending to such a story yeah, like that's the that's the, the hard part, right? Because like sometimes when we watch like movies or like we read books or TV shows, right? Like we sometimes think like, oh, that, that was a bad ending. Like I would end it in a different way. And then when you start like thinking about it, it's like, actually, this is very hard. It's, it's very, very hard because like when you love certain characters and you love like the way that the story goes, it's like sometimes you don't want it to end. Like uh, I remember uh, when I used to watch like How I Met Your Mother. And I love that show in the beginning because like it was such an interesting concept, like the guys telling his kids about how he met their mother. And then by the end, like I love the ending, but I know a lot of people that watch the ending, they're like, I hated it. And they're like, I'm like, why? And they're like, oh, I didn't think that story would end that way. I'm like, how did you think the story would end? And then like hear other people's like opinions about how the story would end. It was like, it, it's so peculiar because like, the way I saw the story was different than another person's way of seeing the story. And like, even uh, like movies, like, um, I don't know if you've seen the new Spider-Man, but like the way that movie ended, um, I, I personally loved it. I know some people are like, oh, I, I wanted a more like, okay, I can't, I, I don't want to talk about it because like, I don't know. Any I mean, I've watched the first two. I haven't. Uh the the first two in this like three part series thus far uh, but i have not seen the most uh recent one so don't tell me i, I won't tell you uh, anything about the movie I but like, i think you're mentioning before you've seen that movie two with two three times now yeah like i i because <laughs> like i've been going to the theaters as much as possible before they shut down because I, I love movies and i love like um going outside and yeah, like it was such a great experience to like see that uh, movie because like it made me feel like a kid again. Like I feel like a lot of movies and a lot of stuff nowadays, it's so dark and it's always like dramatic and stuff like that. It's like seeing something that kind of like made you feel young and feel like happy. It was like incredible. So yeah, like it just, and seeing like everyone in the audience, like, you know, screaming, shouting and like chanting and like dressed up as like Spider-Man. It was like, it felt like before COVID. So like I, I kind of miss that. Like nowadays, I feel like everyone's kind of just like 
stressed out and like sad and it sucks because like I think we all deserve a little bit of happiness nowadays. Well, I, I agree. Uh, you've been involved in a lot of creative projects in the music and literature world so far. What has your favorite project been? Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> in terms of music, uh, I worked with this very uh, talented producer named uh, QB Beats. Uh, he still does music. <clears throat> He's more ventured into rap and like uh, hip hop. But uh, yeah, like the, all the songs that we did together, like we actually collabed with someone in Montreal, one of my good friends, and he did a short film. And uh, he finished the short film and everything, but he needed a, a background song uh, for the short film. So he's like, hey, uh, I know we wanted to work together, but like, do you have any song in mind? And then me and uh, Huey, we actually did a song like a year before. And uh, he wrote it and uh, produced it and I sang on it. And uh, we, we just wanted to hold on to it because we felt like we wanted to use it when we felt like it was right to release. And then when the short film guy uh, uh, called us and we were talking to him, we we're like, oh, this kind of fits into whatever the short film is. And then um, once the short film got released and he added the song in, like he didn't tell us until like the day of, he's like, oh, check out the film. I'm like, okay, cool. I thought it was good to just be like in the movie for like five minutes, five seconds or something, but it was in it for like a good amount of time. It was part of like the, 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 the climax part. Oh, wow. That's, that's and this, something. The short film actually like blew up in India. Like it, it, it's at like 300 or 400,000 views now. But uh, yeah, it was really cool because like uh, we never thought that our songs would be used in like any sort of media. We just like did the songs because like we vibed and we were just like creating stuff on the spot and like feeling whatever we were feeling at the time. And then, yeah, we did another song with them for another short film. That one did pretty nicely too. And um, in terms of writing my favorite project, um, there is a short story that I wrote called Wrong Number. And it's kind of a, a funny story that I'll tell in a quick way. So, you know, you like, you probably get like these like annoying uh, customer service calls or like yeah. the call center calls. Lots. It's like oh, call or whatever, right? So one time, like I was pretty angry when I picked up the call because they called like eight times that morning. So I was like, yeah, like I'm really not about this. Like uh, I was just like shouting and like telling them like, you know, to, I don't want to swear, but like, yeah, you get it. Like I, I was like swearing and stuff. And then when I cut the call, I was like, what if? uh one of those people that do those calls called the wrong person like they called a person that's a murderer or like you know a psychotic person so then i'm like okay and then i wrote the story in like 30 minutes and then published it and that was ironically my most popular story because i guess it connected with a lot of people because like a lot of people deal with these kind of things right like everyone that i know is super annoyed of those like call uh calls and i guess like uh, it's my best reviewed uh, short story too, ironically. And I guess like it's that little fantasy that people have of like those pe those people getting payback in a way. Because like, you know, sometimes they call you like when you're like busy studying or like, you know, up, like trying to meditate or eat or whatever. So yeah, like w I wrote the story. I was kind of like in a way uh, something for me to like release that like a bad energy that I was getting from those calls and then yeah it, it went pretty well and like it's still doing pretty well it's my number one selling short story so far so like yeah it, it's, it's kind of where life yeah like the bad thing in life gave me a good thing in writing so yeah. so I know that you're quite the uh quite the bookworm I know <laughs> you all these books that you've read during COVID do you have a favorite genre to read and do you have a favorite genre to write? Yeah, so it's kind of, uh, it's I'm very hypocritical in my uh, likes. So even when it comes to movies, I don't have a favorite movie because like I, I feel like I always like a lot of things. But when it comes to books, I, ironically, I, I love uh, autobiographies. Like I love reading about other people's lives. I want to know how they became famous or why they became the way that they are today. And I just fil uh, finished uh, Will Smith's book which was super amazing. Like I recommend anyone uh, to read it. Uh, it was incredible. Like obviously he's led a really amazing life and just reading about how he became famous and why 
he uh, why he was doing things the way that he did it was just like super eye opening because like you know when when a person has achieved that much in their life and they're revealing this much it's like you know even regular people like you and me like we probably wouldn't reveal that much to anyone but then this guy is like achieved everything and he's revealing like problems with his marriage problems with his kids problems with his career it's just like incredible so yeah like i love uh reading autobiographies when it comes to writing i like writing thrillers a little more uh horror thrillers psychological thrillers um like um stuff in, uh, involving like monsters dinosaurs stuff like that um also i've been trying to write a little more like vast so like my stories have my my stories have been a little more like um uh, eclectic recently like, i'm trying to write more like about romance and drama and uh history and stuff like that so yeah i'm trying to branch out a little more but when it comes to reading it i actually read more non-fiction than fiction Now you've worked in music, in writing, and even film as a reviewer. Are there any areas that you hope to work in in the future? You're you're pretty well-rounded. I wouldn't be surprised if something else came up. You're so uh, multi-talented. Well, I, thank you, Julia. You're very multi-talented too. Uh, I, I think your viewers already know that. But uh, yeah, like uh, I would say. I would love for one of my stories to be adapted into film. That I think that's one of my aims. So, like I guess, like screenwriting, um, like uh, adapting a, a story into movies, that would be awesome. And uh, yeah, like I, I don't know. Like I guess, I guess, like whatever comes my way. Like I just like I go with the flow. Like I don't really like uh, think it. of. Yeah, I don't really force it. Even like for New Year's, right? Like when you do New Year's resolutions, like I don't really like. say like i need to do this this and this like for me it's like i'll i'll plan towards it but it's not like if it doesn't happen i'm not going to be sad if it happens i'll be you know overjoyed like it's something that you know um happened along the way but it's not like do or die for me when it comes to these things so i mean yeah in the future if i can work in film in some sort of way that'll be awesome I feel like that's the next uh, natural progression for your work yeah. in the direction that you're going in. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, yeah. Because like when I came to music like I was aiming to do like film kind of music when I'm writing, I'm trying to do like more cinematic kind of writing. I mean, like y- you know this too, like we both work together at uh TIFF, so like I uh, my um uh, I well, I still work at TIFF before the restrictions, but uh, yeah, like my uh, mind is very art arts based and I try to surround myself uh, I surround myself with like other artists and people that think uh like me and um uh, kind of like go in the same path. And uh yeah, like I I just I'm so intrigued by like everyone's like, you know, different tastes in like uh, uh books and film and TV because like, you know, I'm not the type of person that has one specific thing that I like go after. Like I like to read anything that seems good to me. Like if I, one day I might be reading something that's very like action based, but then the next day I'll be reading an autobiography. The next day I'll be reading like a a book on essays or like a bo- philosophy. So it's not really something where it's like I need, if this is the only thing I'm going to be focused on. Like yeah, like I, I think it's in a way that's kind of better because it's like food, right? Like everyone has a favorite food, but like there's so much food in the world. that uh when you eat like you just want to indulge like as much as possible right well speaking of other artists are there any other musicians or writers who inspire you or that you'd like to work with in the future well yeah i mean like uh i would my aim in music is to still work with air on monster um uh, that'll be a dream um but yeah like hopefully knock on wood one day that will happen um other artists to work with yeah like uh, i know a ton of artists that like they keep reaching out to me and like i i keep delaying working with them unfortunately because like for me like i want to be in the right headspace and the right kind of like mood to work with them like i don't ever want to work with someone and be like oh you're not really into it you know like i want to uh, when someone works with me i want to give my 100 110% like i don't want to be there just for the sake of working with someone So um yeah like when it comes to like a uh, film like uh, again a dream would be to write a movie for like Chris Nolan or Steven uh Spielberg or David Fincher or someone like that. I mean like a, a guy can dream but like <laughs> like yeah for me 
uh, I think uh, it'll be a wide variety of like wishes that I have. But like for me in in general, anything that I achieve, like I'm just happy about. I'm like grateful that people even like the stuff that I did, I've done in music and in writing. So like I'm I'm just like super grateful that you know people have vibed with uh, whatever I've done so far and that are still um, you know connecting with my stuff even to this day like there's songs that I released like uh, five years ago that people are finding on now and they're like oh th I have this new artist and I'm like oh I'm not <laughs> but like thank you it's just it's super cool because like you know you ne you never know how longevity works with your work so like the the biggest like room uh, flat uh, is the biggest thing that I would think is like flattering is like when a person uh, finds your work like so long later and they still like it as if it's like a brand new thing Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're such a talented artist and it was such a pleasure interviewing you Yeah, no worries. And uh, yeah, I'm honored to uh, be on the show and it's very nice talking to you I hope everything is going well during uh, these restrictions. I know it's kind of tough But yeah, I hope the viewers are staying safe as well. And uh, thank you Thank you so much and thank you to our viewers at home for tuning in. This has been your host, Julia Cosby, and you're watching Inc. TV. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications to keep up to date with all of our latest content.